the legendary entertainer, actor, and Emmy Award winner, Oba Babatunde, provided realurbannews.com with an exclusive behind the scenes look at Bold and the Beautiful. I'm Michael Real, and this is realurbannews.com. Oba Babatunde is considered a veteran soap opera star. He joined the cast of Bold and the Beautiful in July of 2015 as Julius Avant. must have been an exciting evening when you won your Emmy. It was quite exciting. You know, it's a, it's a difficult chair to sit in. Uh, having had the good graces to sit in that chair before as a nominee for Miss Evers Boys, uh, people say to me constantly, so what was it like? What was it like when, 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 when they called your name? And I say to them, I said, well, listen, I identify this. My experience is I think that I expect it not to happen but be prepared if it should. And you say, well, why would you say that? You know, why wouldn't you expect it to happen? Well, if it doesn't happen, then you're not extremely disappointed. But if it should, that you're prepared. And I hopefully in the, in the speech uh, that I gave, uh, it, it sort of um, really gave credit to a lot more than me. You know, I say self-praise is no praise. Mm. So while it was exciting, you know, uh, I'm simply doing the work. I'm doing the work, and uh, hopefully the work is something that represents us well around the world. The images that go forward to su suggest to someone who may never have the opportunity to meet someone who may appear like me or you, who that person might be, as opposed to sometimes what is always more often than not presented in the media of who that person is. Before we started the interview, one of your colleagues stuck their head in and they asked us who we were talking to. We said, Oba, and they said, oh, he brings the entertainment. He just wanted Emmy. <laughs> What's that like? Your, 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 your colleagues appreciate you. They love you. Uh, they've been ha hanging all over you all day. They, they speak highly of you. You want an Emmy. What's that like? You know what? It is an honor to be, when anybody takes the time to recognize your work. Um, what goes down in the annals, and in particular this year, is that for CBS, the network, there's only one actor that won an Emmy for CBS in daytime, and you're talking to him. I hold that with great, great pride. To take it home, and for my son, as it sits on the mantel, to be able to identify that his father has been recognized in an industry at one of the highest levels. It is great for him. It means a great deal to me, probably because of that. Mm -hmm. That my family, and for the rest of my and their life, will be able to identify, look at that statue, and understand that there was a sacrifice, a commitment that was made, and here it is, proof of the success of that commitment. You won for your work on this uh, stellar soap opera, daytime television, Bold and the Beautiful. We're watching you behind the scenes, you're acting. What is it like working on this legendary show? You know, to work on Bold and the Beautiful is really an honor. I get a chance to walk down those halls every day, knowing that I'm gonna get to tell a story about a particular family based on their humanity in a particular situation which right now is troubling and is, 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 is really, um, it's difficult. But I also like to say that it's not what happens to us in life, but how we respond to it. So I'm really thrilled. I came on initially to do a 15 episode arc and here we are one year later and they still feel kind enough to have me be on the show. So I'm thrilled. You play the character Julius Avant. Who is Julius Avant? 
Julius Avant. And who is he? He's a complex individual. He is a man who believes in family, first and foremost. He is not a perfect individual as none of us are, but he is a man who is a man of conviction. He stands by his convictions. He even admits when he's wrong, if he believes he's wrong. <laughs> People respond to you uh, in, your, in your character. What does that say to you in terms of your responsibility? Well, that's a good question. Deserves a great answer. Um, Responsibility. You know, we're often asked that as, as, as people that are in front of the camera. You know, your responsibility. Why is it that da 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 You know, what I like to say is, your do is not necessarily your who. By that I mean, what you do is what you do. But your who is how you affect change in others' lives. I would like to think that I have tried to uh, represent myself and therefore others that may look like me in a way that would be of a, a modicum of pride yeah. and respect. And that's, that's really what I think that the responsibility is, is my responsibility is to, to represent myself at a standard of excellence in all that I do, both on camera and off camera. How challenging is that? We live in a uh... 24 hour, well we used to live in a 24 hour media age, and now it's instant. Yes. And uh, you know, living a high profile life, people are always seeing you. What are some of the challenges? Of well, you know what, uh, in terms of challenges of, of one celebrity, mm -hmm. what I have found is it has opened up the opportunity for me to make a lot of new acquaintances. Some people are really, have problems when people want to uh, come up to them and say things. I have actor friends of mine that are well known that don't deal with it well. They say, I don't want to be bothered. You know, why are they? Well, the idea is I understand that through the endeavors of my career, I have been coming into the hearts and minds and to the individuals who, uh, you know, the career spans an excess of a four and a half decade. Sure. Okay? So I've been coming into the hearts and minds and the viewpoint of people for many, many years. That gives me a great spectrum of a fan base. And ultimately what I identify is that all people want to say to me is, or someone who they see and respect is, hey, I like what you did. Hey, you made me laugh. Hey, you made me cry. And that is a compliment being paid. And so I open them and receive them with open arms. And I appreciate the acknowledgement. And I only hope that I've made them really have a moment in their life through my work that has given them the ability to transition through an issue that might have been difficult in their own lives. You have a, a litany, <laughs> a, a catalog of uh, Obaisms. Yes. How do they develop? These ideas that I share with you have come about through the years of listening to myself and others. I've had the pleasure of working with, with a lot of wonderful people over the years. Uh, great directors, great entertainers. Mr. Great, the late great Mr. Sammy Davis Jr. was my entertainment mentor. I met him in 1978 and he befriended me and I was with him throughout his life until his passing. The great Ozzie Davis and Ruby Dee. Mr. Sidney Poitier. The list goes on of people that I knew and have not yet met, but were able to see a standard that they set for and before me at a time when there was less opportunity for us. You know, very often we hear things and they become slogans. Yeah. But these things are not. The slogan was born out of something. And so I often, when I hear a slogan or something that's used in a slogan form, I, on, I often think about what does that really actually mean? And what was that born out of? And so that's where these things have come from. You know, I love the terminology, Obaisms, you know. But um, they're really things that actually, that we all have thought about 
or not thought about, but have been in the environment of our lives. What is it like uh, working with all these legendary actors and actresses? And then, you know, you're, you are a legendary actor. What's it like? What's, what's that like being you? Well, you know what? Um, <laughs> <laughs> being, what is it like being Oba Baba Tunde? Uh, the second, first part of the question is probably easier to answer which is what has it been like working with those great legendary people? Um, it's been an honor. I've had a course set for me by which I identify my career. But let me take it one step further. There's a woman by the name of Alma Smith, probably completely anonymous to everybody with the exception of her family. But she happened to be the mother of my best friend growing up. One day I had a very difficult day at school and I came home and my head was hanging low. And Mrs. Smith took my chin in her hand. She looked into my eyes and she said this to me, it's going to be okay, you're special. And for whatever reason, at that moment in time, I believed her, I believed her. And I stand here today with you a repository of that moment where I believed that I was special. Isn't it interesting how people always will, you always hear, now you ain't special. Well, why would somebody tell you you're not special as opposed to you are special? It becomes pejorative when people talk about themselves. I'll remember there was, you know, we just lost the great Muhammad Ali. And I remember in junior high school, there was a lady who was the lunchroom monitor in junior high school. And I was on my way and she looked at me and she says, I bet you like that Cassius Clay, don't you? And I said, yes. And she said, he ain't nothing but a loud mouth nigga. And I said, because you know, wasn't allowed to really have a, a forward conversation with an adult in my, at that early maturation. But for whatever reason, I mustered up the courage to say to her, why? because he says what he's going to do, and then he does it. It was interesting, and I, I can remember that to this day, and you can realize how many years ago that was in junior high school for me, but I remember that. You see, the damage that has been done. People, even on Bold and the Beautiful, I ran into people, and they said, you know what, I can't stand you. You on my soap, but I can't stand you. And I said, really, how come? Well, I just, I ain't, I, 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 and this was early on when I first came on the show. They said, they, they said I, just, I, I just never liked you from the time you came on. And I said, why not? And they said, I don't know, I just don't like the way you look. I said, you mean I'm unpleasing to the eye? No, that's not what I'm talking about. I said, oh, I know what it is. Because it's not common to see a man in this hue who represents himself unafraid of the establishment. In this case, the foresters. Now they've been living with the foresters for a very long time. They're the, the bedrock of the, one of the wealthiest families in Hollywood. So who is the, this guy to come in and talk to them like he just don't care? But you know what I said? I said, listen, you have to identify, if you will, that there's a man that presently sits in the highest office in the land whose hue from, is familiar with mine. Why is it such a stretch that I might have an opinion about something, particularly as it pertains to my family? Interesting. Interesting. In part two with Oba Babatunde, we discussed several social issues that through his current and former character, the actor has been on the forefront of.